Closed captioning for Heart Matters is brought to you today by Gander Car Care, located on 70 Row Avenue, serving Gander and area for nearly 30 years. Heart Matters is made possible through local support. Beaton's Realty, located at 105 Row Avenue, Gander. Dan's Pantry, located at the Gander Mall. And Dooley's Trucking, servicing all of your shipping needs. My name is Mike Freak and welcome to Heart Matters. In 2012, I had the incredible privilege to meet our next guest while I was traveling to Tanzania, Africa. And I saw firsthand the condition that so many of our African friends live in. Well, our guest today grew up in a little town in Newfoundland, but now lives in Tanzania, making a huge difference. Stay tuned as we talk with Anna Rousel and hear firsthand why she decided to move to Tanzania and about the incredible things that God is doing. Also singing on our program today from Gander is Sandra Osmond. So thanks for watching and enjoy today's program here on Heart Matters.
together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You stay the same. Two years ago, I had the privilege of traveling to Tanzania, Africa, and saw firsthand the difference that our next guest is making. Growing up in a small town in Newfoundland, Ann Arousal is now making a big difference. Thanks for coming on the program today. Thanks. It's good to be here. Now, before we talk about what you're involved in now, what you're doing, uh, take us back to what life was like prior to, uh, to going to Africa. Well, I grew up in the town of Leading Tickles. And um, graduated high school, and from there went on to do my first year of university at Munn. And from there went to attend um, Bible College in Peterborough, Ontario, and finished my theology degree. And um, from that started to pastor a church, and then had some prior experience overseas as well. Okay, so growing up in the small town of Leading Tickles, uh, was church a big part of your life then? Yeah, church was always a big part of my life. I grew up in a Christian home and um, was involved as I got older, got involved in our children's ministries, our youth ministries, was always a big part of my life. Okay, so uh, before uh, going to Africa, you were pastoring in Newfoundland, but while you were pastoring, did you always have this desire, uh, yearning, I guess, uh, to go overseas? Well, I was never a big traveler or anything and never really had big dreams of going overseas. But any time when I would hear missionaries talk about things that were happening overseas or when I saw pictures of things that were happening overseas, there was always some kind of um, desire in my heart to kind of know those things firsthand. And something always triggered me inside. Mm. Now, before you went to... Uh, Africa, you actually did a little detour to Russia, I believe. Uh, what did you do in that country? Yeah, my first experience um, was in Nairobi, Africa, um, Kenya, in the country of Kenya in 2004. That was only for two weeks, but in 2005 was my first experience in Russia. And in Russia, I was teaching English as a second language because teaching has also been one of my um, passions, one of my desires always as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for three years, I spent teaching um, university students and children in Vladivostok, Russia. Okay, so uh, wasn't long after that uh, that you, uh you were starting to have, uh, I guess, a different direction kind of laid out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and Africa was a part of that. How did you get connected to Tanzania? My, yeah, during those three years, it really began to play more and more in my heart that I wanted to do something like this long term. So after finishing in Russia in 2008, I was back here in Newfoundland for two years. And um, I made application as a full-time missionary. 
and it took a two two year term to finish that application but having given my past experience and my passions my interest and my previous um, experiences to the to the church then they actually were the ones that chose this position for me in Tanzania great so uh, Tanzania, I mean, it's a huge difference from the town that you grew up in. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about a huge cultural change for you. What was that cultural change like? Yeah, it was really something awesome for me. It was a um, totally different experience, of course, and I'm living in the city of Mwanza in Tanzania, and they have close to a million people living in that city, but the um, life is totally different than it is here, of course, because we meet with a lot of poverty and um, also meet with a lot of people that are doing well, and just the whole, the city life and the village life and um, the whole way the people travel the way it's the cities, the streets are crowded, and um, just the, so many different ways that people live. It was really a different experience for me. One of the differences was was obvious. I mean, the language, mm. um, Swahili. I mean, how difficult was that adjustment for you? Mm -hmm. For four months, my first four months in um, Tanzania, I didn't know any of the language. So it was really difficult because the language is the main way of reaching the people and to have any kind of open door with the people. And so after being there for four months, I actually went into language study for four months. And after that began to use, put into use what I had learned. And um, then whole many new doors opened up for me because it meant a whole new experience with the people once I started to learn the language. So was it difficult to get a grasp on the language? Yeah, it was really difficult. And I think to learn any language is difficult, um, but we had really good teachers. It was a really good program. And the people of Tanzania are very friendly, very open, very warm, welcoming. So anytime we wanted to practice, we just had to walk down the lane and visit the village people, even sit down on the bench outside the house and just practice Swahili. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so give us an idea of what a typical day is like for you in your line of work in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Well, my office in um, Mwanza is at a place called the Village of Hope. So it's actually kind of an orphanage setting and can, because we run an orphanage there. It's a children's home. And so my day usually involves going to the office and taking care of administrative matters because I'm the director for a sponsorship program in Tanzania. And um, along with that, I visit the children, visit the mamas that live on site where we are. Along with that, I spend time visiting the children outside of our center because we sponsor many children in the community, in the villages, and uh, take care of any problems that may be, might be taking place with our administrators and with anything that's happening. And I'm also involved in our um, local church and involved in different ministries there. And so any given day usually involves all of those things. So what are some of the challenges that face the people in that country? Um, some of the challenges are the lack of work for people, lack of jobs. Like people, even young people that finish high school, that have that privilege to finish high school, uh, it's very difficult for them to find work. And many young people don't finish high school, and some children may only go to grade 7 because they don't have the funds to pay school fees, or they can't get their uniforms, so they can't go to school. And if they haven't finished their education, then it's even more difficult these days to find any possible of work and um, so then because uh, there are many children as well in families and um, the parents may not have the resources that they need to care for those families so poverty is is an issue that faces many of the people of Tanzania. Give us an, uh, a, I guess a, a, a description of the people uh, you know considering the you know the, the many things that they do lack uh, they do have so much uh, just tell us about how wonderful those people are. Um, the Tanzanian people are truly wonderful people. Very warm, very welcoming, very peaceful. Um, for the most part, Tanzanians don't like conflict and they are very relational. 
um, there's a very close relationship between um, the community members, between the village members, where people live and who lives around them. A close relationship between family. We have many, we see many children who live, if their parents have died, then they're cared for by um, an aunt, uncle, maybe grandmother, grandfather, even neighbors will take in children because they sense that uh, sense of community and so they the relational aspect is very strong one of the of the of the, of the main things that you're involved in is sponsorship mm -hmm. how important is sponsorship um, for us sponsorship is a very important aspect in the children's lives and even in in the families that we serve um, because through sponsorship the ch all the children that we sponsor, we know that they're going to have the opportunity to go to school. And that's the main thing that we focus on for them. But along with that, they also receive a monthly food supply and um, they receive clothing when they need it. Their medical needs are cared for. And uh, we have the privilege of visiting them once a month to share about Jesus with them and the love of God. And uh, I find that it has a very big impact in their lives. And to say that sponsorship is important this is not just lip service for you. Uh, you actually uh, put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk about uh, your personal involvement in sponsorship. Yeah, I believe in sponsorship. And I had actually had a child in Tanzania before I went to Tanzania, which I believe that God worked out for me long before I ever knew I was going. And I was sponsoring that child. And I had one more besides. But since then, I have five more children. So I sponsor seven children in total. Wow. So, Someone who's watching today and, and maybe what you're saying is kind of resonating with them and uh, maybe they're thinking about, you know, that they would like to get involved and they would like to sponsor a child. How can they go about that? Um, the best way to go about sponsoring right now would be to visit our website and that's www.erdo.ca and you'll see all the information about sponsoring a child. And there's no shortage of children that need to be sponsored? No, we always have children on, on, the, on the website and we always have children that need sponsorship. So Anna, you know, growing up in a small town in Newfoundland, now experiencing what you've experienced, how has your view of the world changed, uh, you know, considering all that you've done? Um, I've kind of come to see the world as, as a small place that someone from small town Newfoundland like me can go so far. And uh, I know that has to do with God's plan for our lives. But also I used to think that um, we were living in normal conditions here in Canada but I've come to see that we kind of live way above normal conditions and uh, I've come to know what normal conditions are in the world and I'm really thankful that I've had my worldview broadened by all of my experiences. And Anna, you know, there may be someone who's watching today uh, that feels as though you know, that, that God wants them to do something and maybe they feel like they're held back by maybe what they have or what they think they don't have uh, maybe a circumstance or a condition of, of their lives. Uh, what would you like to say to them to encourage them to step out? Um, I would say that if you feel that and that God has a plan for your life, it doesn't matter where you're from or what you have or what you don't have. If you, are, you just follow that, then God can lead you anywhere and He can use you to do anything. And uh, none of those circumstances matter when God is in the picture. That's right. And I think you're a great example of that. Uh, thanks so much for coming on our program today, and uh, we look forward to hearing what uh, you are going to continue to do. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Now, if you've enjoyed that interview or any part of the show, then we would love to hear from you. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can leave a message on our feedback line by calling 256-3336 or by visiting our website at heartmatters.tv. Now, once you've gotten to our page, you can leave us your thoughts about our show or maybe you have an idea for an upcoming show. Feel free to leave us those suggestions. And now a word from our sponsors. Heart Matters is made possible through local support. Beaton's Realty, serving Gander and area. Visit beatonsrealty.ca today and see a full listing of properties in your area. And Nance Pantry, located at the Gander Mall. Nance Pantry has everything you're looking for. Need something shipped? Then contact Julie's Trucking in Gander. 
ship with the best. Ship Dooley's Trucking. One of the things many of us in Newfoundland love is a good old wood fire. I'm sure you've heard it said, nothing like the wood heat. That is so true, especially when you lose the power. I mean, you can lose the power for a couple of days. Lots of your friends want to come over to the house during the power outage, or you had a cabin, you know, and you got the fire cracking, a big snowstorm on. It's really comfortable, and it's a cozy feeling. A fire does provide warmth and give you that feeling of, of shelter. I believe the church is designed by God to be a place where people find shelter, a place of warmth in a world that is often very cold. Life can be cruel. Life can leave you without a source of comfort. Where do you turn for shelter in this life? Church is often referred to as a sanctuary, which actually means a place of refuge. We are to provide a sanctuary or a refuge. The church is to be like a, a warm fire in a cold often very cold and cruel, selfish world. You may see the church as a cold, religious, unwelcoming place, and truthfully, we haven't always done well as a church being a place that is welcoming and warm, and many people are disillusioned with the church. Do you see the church as a cold, unwelcoming place or a place of refuge? Jesus came to build his church to provide a refuge for the world. I believe that Christ is the answer to life's greatest need, Real security and comfort is found in Christ alone. People are in need, in need of love, not lust. People are longing for freedom, not bondage, hope and joy and peace. Many in their pain and anger use the name of Jesus as just a curse word when he is actually the one who provides this comfort that so many are longing for. We sing these powerful words, Jesus, just a mention of your name, like fire in winter cold, like pure, precious gold. Jesus, just a mention of your name. That name of Jesus Christ provides a place of refuge, a shelter. He changed my cold heart by his great love. He brought my life to where God longed for it to be. In Christ alone, I found hope and shelter. And in Christ alone, I believe there is real hope and shelter. You may be in the greatest power outage of your life and feel it's completely hopeless. I want you to know today that there is a fire, there is a place of warmth and comfort, and it's found in Christ alone. Jesus Christ, his death and life is a place of shelter. He loves you, he cares for you, and no matter what you're going through in your life, the name of Jesus Christ is hope to the hopeless. May you look to Christ and find hope in your great time of need. The church is not made from bricks and wood. The church is all about people. For more information about Evangel Church in Gander, please visit evangelgander.ca. That the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt. Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart? It's not because of who I am. But because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave 
tossed in the ocean a vapor in the wind still you hear me when i'm calling lord you catch me when i'm falling and you told me who i am i am yours who am i that the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again who am i that the voice that calm the seas will call out through the rain and calm the storm in me it's not because of who i am but because of what you've done not because of what i've done but because of who you are i am a flower quickly fading here today and gone tomorrow a wave tossed in the ocean a vapor in the wind still you hear me when i'm calling lord you catch me when i'm told me who I am. I am yours. It's not because of who I am. But because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor. You catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. Let us know what you think of our program today. Please visit our website at heartmatters.tv or leave us a message by calling 256-3336. Well, that's it for another show, and thanks so much for watching. A special thanks to Anna Rousa for sharing her story and to Sandra Osmond for singing two incredible songs that speak to the truth of who God is. Now, if you have a suggestion for an upcoming show, then we'd love to hear what you have to say. You can do so by visiting heartmatters.tv or call our feedback line at 709-256-3336. Now, we're making plans for upcoming shows, and we invite you to be a part of it. Thanks for watching, and have a great day from all of us here at Heart Matters.